high churn levels can take any company out of business just like this. In this video, I will show you how can you use AI first to detect who is going to churn and second and most importantly, to prevent. Hi there, I'm Kelvin Fernandez, co-founder and CEO of Nile AI, and welcome to another AI shot. In this one, I will talk to you about churn prediction. So if you already watched our video on 11 artificial intelligence application in marketing, I think that's the name, and um, you will know that there is like build scoring, upselling, cross-selling, and churn. And churn is basically when the customers leave a company, either voluntarily, which is what I'm going to talk today about today, or involuntarily, which is when, when you cancel the customer subscription due to lack of payment, etc. So let's focus now on today on Sean prediction, voluntary Sean prediction. The client leaves because they don't want their product any longer because they are moving to the competitors, etc. So the first thing you need to know about Sean is what data will you need if you want to tackle Sean uh, prediction. Okay, so let's go for the data. The data that you will need, I will and I only suggest to start with this one is transactional data. So what is transactional data? Transaction. It's basically payments, okay? And I always tell my clients to start with transactional because each and every company has transactional data. Regardless of whether you are a small, you know, bakery on, on the city center, or if you are a large corporation, you need to generate invoices, right? So you need to charge your customers because you know, you need to collect taxes. So transactional data is always there. Start collecting that data, not because, not start using the data, not because it will be super powerful on the predictions, but because you for sure already have this data, okay? Once you consider transactional data, you can move to behavioral data. What is behavioral data? How much they are, the, crop, the client is using your product, you know? Which features of the product is the client using? You know, the kind of touch points that the client had with you, the customer support tickets that they opened. So all the customer journey of the client. This is more tricky to, to, to work with because it's more diverse, because it covers a lot of sides from the client, but it's the most power, powerful one you want to use. Okay. So go with behavioral data, with all the behavioral data you can go with. Okay. Once you cover behavioral data, you can go with some profound information. Okay. What do I mean by profound information? Two things. One is demographics. Okay, if you have it. And this is not that critical for, for many companies, but the most important one here on profile information is contractual data. I will say that actually, you know, between behavioral and contractual data, these two are the most powerful to build any sharp prediction model. And you know, contractual data is basically for how long has this customer be my client, if they are on any loyalty period or not, if they are a monthly, if they have a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription, and if they have been buying more licenses for my product. So how is the contract with the client, you know? And this is, so if, if they have some additional features or not, included in the contracts on bonus, etc. So this is super critical. And the last one, and people tend to forget this one, is context, okay? What do I mean by context? How much is the customer paying you with respect to the competitor's price? Where are the competitor's current marketing campaigns? So what is the average price they have charged? How is your quality of service on the region that we are serving this customer? And um, how do you compare on market share for this specific location? Is any new competitor in this area? So all of this is context and it's quite relevant to understand any market fluctuation you will have that may affect any specific cost. So these are the four data points you need to consider when going for shop. By the way, if you are deciding on any use case, sure or not, what data points to include, we will have a link on the description with our data priority metrics that we use on our data and methodology to understand with our clients how to build a roadmap of data inclusion in our lives. Okay, so now that we cover what data you need, let's go for how to model shard. Okay, the easiest way to, mo to, to model it is answering, is building a model that will answer the question, when will a customer Sure. Okay. 
So the model will basically tell you this customer is going to churn in two weeks or in one week or in six months or in one year. Okay. So the, the model is basically predicting the time until sharp. Okay. So what, what, so this is basically technical. This is regression. Okay. If you are talking with a data scientist, this is a regression task. If you're on the business side, it's not what I said. Okay. But this is the, the easiest way to model churn. It has some tricky parts. For example, how can you deal with the clients that never, never leave your company? Will you predict like they never leave infinite? So it's kind of tricky. The main advantage is of this modeling approach is that it gives you some urgency there. Okay. So you know that you need to tackle the clients that will leave sooner. Okay. So it gives you this urgency indicator of which ones to tackle first. This is the first approach. The second approach is will a customer churn in the next K days? Let's say X days. And here the answer is yes or no, or the probability of this. Okay. So if you're not at a technical point, this is classification. Yeah. Approach one, when will the customer leave? Approach two, will a customer churn in the next X? Okay. In general, this tends to have a very high performance. Um, it tends to be super easy to build. You don't have this issue of how to handle the customers that never leave because, you know, you'll say they will leave on X days. But um, the main disadvantage here, the main disadvantage that I see is that it doesn't give you a very sensitive urgency uh, indicator, you know, you have a probability of their leaving, but you don't know between all of these that leave within two months, which ones are the most critical ones. And the other, the other tricky part here is that you need to choose this X days. Okay? So you need to choose the time window. And this is a tricky question to answer. So let's say you have here the days, the time period, days, months, wherever. You will face this issue. If you are predicting, like, will this customer leave today or tomorrow, you will observe like a high prediction power. Okay. So the model will be super accurate. Why? Because the customer already exhibited their unsatisfaction. Unsatisfaction. Okay. If you go for a long period of time, like, will this customer leave ne next year? You will start accumulating on numbers because you don't know what is going to happen during the next year. So your prediction, your predictive performance will decay. Okay. So this is the performance and the accuracy. But the actionability is like the opt. Okay. So action. So if I go for today, maybe I know who is going to leave, but I cannot do anything. If I go. If I am, if I was actually very good at knowing who is going to leave next year, I could still save them and treat them properly, etc., and recover. So there is this trade-off on this second approach with a customer sharing next X days, which is choosing the right X will involve a trade-off between how actionable is your model and and how good the performance will be. Okay, so this is the second approach. And another disadvantage of this is this model doesn't tell you how to save it. Okay. It just tells you that they are unsatisfied. They don't tell you, you know, how to prevent them from sharing. Okay. So if you want to, to, to think about this, if I give you, you know, like the sharing probability and you know, you have these ones with probability of one and these ones with probability of zero, maybe the guys that are around here. I are already so annoyed by how you treated them in the past that you know it doesn't matter how what kind of marketing offer you make them, measure offer offer you make them, they won't stay. So if you just start tackling them, so from the most unsatisfied to the less unsatisfied, then most likely you will be tackling the ones you cannot save. Okay. If you start tackling this, they are already satisfied, so you don't need to do anything actually. The, the the ones that you can save are actually here. They are the ones on the middle. So this kind of model doesn't give you much support on who you should talk. 
if you bought this approach, I will choose, of course, the most unsatisfied. And of course, some of them cannot be safe, but some of them can. So I will go this way. But what I actually suggest you to do is going in the third approach, which is will a customer share in the next X days? Okay, so far it's the same, but it has a tricky part, which is if I do Y. So it has this additional component. Okay, will a customer share in the next X days if I do Y? If I do a commercial offer, if I do a certain treatment, if I call in to see our things with the contract. And this changes the entire landscape because now. You know, first of all, if you can save them because you can check, you know, what is the right treatment or the treatment that increases, that decreases the probability of shun, okay? And second of all, you will understand what is the best treatment, the, the best action in terms of the trade-off between how much your probability of shun changes and how much that will cost. So you know which ones can be saved by understanding, you know, this customer is here. If I apply A, treatment A, it will come here, so I can save them. This will be basically doing nothing, will be the will be a treatment, okay, the treatment of just leaving them alone. If I do B, I will actually hurt them even further, so I have this. And if I do another treatment here, is C, okay, and they will just increase this amount. And then you can, you know, understand this gap, how much to change their satisfaction versus how much that treatment costs. How much does A cost you and how much does C cost you, okay? So this is the best approach that I that you can do to do churn prediction. So it, it tells you who is going to share it and how to save. What is the right way of tackling churn in my opinion? First, you go for the second approach, okay? The classification of well. Will this customer churn in the next exit? You solve the data. In the meantime, you run some pilots of multiple treatments and no sense of the of your population to learn how does each customer react to a certain treatment. In the meantime, you're already having some you're already saving some pipes with your classification model, with your simple model, okay? Will this customer show in the next X days? Once you have enough data from different treatments, you move to the final approach, which is Will a customer share in the next X days if I do Y, if I do a certain commercial? This is the best approach you can follow, is the one that is the safest. You will save customers as soon as possible. You don't need to run any treatment at the beginning, but in the long term, you will know how to pull needs to be saved and how to save. If you like this video, remember like, subscribe, activate the notifications, and remember there is some bonus content down there on the, on the description. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.